the only thing cars like this, they've always got manual seats in them. And I've had my mum in the front seat and she's she can't get down to the seats too low. Right, what's happening guys and girls? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to this A1. This is an A1 S-Line Sportback 35 TFSI. And let me tell you guys, I have not had a small engine, small hatchback for a very long time. I think the last time I had one of these was probably when I had my first car and I had a Mark IV Golf. But let me tell you something, after switching from the E92 M3 to this, which has very kindly been lent to me for just over the month by Audi, two things have happened. One, practicality. Number two, miles per gallon. I have had the most insane fuel efficiency. It's probably not even that insane. I just got so used to spending so much money on fuel that now filling a tank up for 50 quid and getting 360 miles out of it, that to me, that's, that's a rub your knee moment. Comparative to the E92, which I was getting maybe 220 miles out of the tank, about 19, 20 miles per gallon. This, on a run, does 50 miles to the gallon. Jesus, I'm starting to sound like my dad. Since when did this all become so exciting to me? And I'll tell you another good thing. Having a small four-door hatch machine like this is entirely practical. Now, I know that we're all thinking that for a daily, while I was looking at SUVs, this and that, but you know what? I am seriously thinking that maybe for a daily car, something as practical, incognito, comfortable, and, you know, efficient as this could be a game changer. So a lot has happened since I last uploaded a video to YouTube. It's been three weeks. I know it's been quite a while. But to be honest, after everything that happened with the dog, I kind of checked out a little bit mentally. Just for an update, we've heard nothing. The dog is completely vanished and we've tried everything we can. It's not all doom and gloom. Some good things have been happening as well. So the show that I was filming last summer that I kept going on about how I couldn't tell you what I was up to, that is finally out on BBC3 right now. Gassed up with Mist and myself. It is finally out on TV. I can't quite believe it. Can you believe that we've gone from YouTube to actual television? Like TV. Being on TV was actually never in my plan. It just kind of happened. But the show's great. There's six episodes of it. You can catch it all on iPlayer now. Um, obviously, we were in Russia a few weeks ago. Everything has kicked off since then. Um, it's such a shame. All I can say is that I feel super dark about the world right now. Like, I don't understand why we have to be in this situation. Just so many people's lives being lost and messed up. It's just... It's one of the other reasons why I haven't really put a video out. It's like I feel like there's much bigger things at hand right now and people don't need me waffling on about an A1 when there are so, you know much bigger issues going on in the world. But here we are. in traffic I'm gonna give you a little overview of what this car is because although it's mini it is actually quite mighty so this is obviously the 1.5 litre inline four-cylinder engine that gives you 150 brake horsepower 250 newton meters of torque it does a 0 to 62 in 7.7 .7 seconds and you've got a top speed of 135 miles an hour coupled with that you've got a seven speed s-tronic gearbox and you've got all of the Audi dynamic controls in here so you can put it into your drive select you can then change it into your efficient auto or dynamic. Dynamics where you get to have a little bit more fun and it just kind of stiffens everything up. Oh, I've just managed to... Honestly, stop. I, I was trying to put it into dynamic and managed to put Spotify on, classic. But basically, this car is a real nippy around town machine. Now, it is a 35 TFSI. When I first got it, I was like, what does 35 mean? Back in the day, the numbers on the back of the car would denote maybe the engine size or maybe the trim level, I don't know. But basically, the 35 is Audi's new way of uh, categorizing their vehicles. This one's in the category of 145 brake horsepower to 159. And you can get a 30, 35, 40, uh, 45 and beyond, but I don't know all. <clears throat> the exact categories of that. I just looked up specifically what the hell a 35 TFSI is. What can I tell you about the way it drives? For everyday driving, it is absolutely grand. Like, you can have a bit of the crack in it. Like, it's got a nice little bit of pull to it. The steering is actually really quite direct. Like, it can feel a little bit 
twitchy sometimes and the brakes are very sharp. I've caught my uh, mum a couple of times with the old donkey neck because I've got on the brakes a little bit too sharply and really they do click on really nicely. It drives as you think it would. It's a front wheel drive car, it's very modern, it's very new. To be honest, like it does feel like a really premium car, like okay this is the base model for Audi, but at the end of the day you've got a lot of the DNA of all of the other older brothers and sisters that it's got like I mean particularly when it comes down to the exterior and the way this thing looks I can't really fault the driving experience it does exactly what it says on the tin it's snippy it's comfortable it's direct like you can't really ask much more from a car which is essentially what I would think is a first car purchase but then that leads me to my next conversation first car purchases I don't know about you my first car was I think three grand this on the road is 30,000 quid, 30,440 to be precise. Yeah, this car has had a few little upgrades here because obviously being a press car, so it's got 1,500 quid's worth of the tech pack, 1,150 quid's worth in the comfort pack. I think that's where you get all your nice bits and bobs, which ultimately you would want, but I think 30 grand is quite expensive for this kind of car. When you think what you could buy on the second-hand car market for 30 grand, I don't know. but courses for courses and all that if you're looking for the perfect run around every day for your missus or your kids this is actually a really really solid investment but here's me sat here talking about your missus and the kids I've absolutely loved this thing I've been running around in it constantly for the last month I've driven to Scotland and back in it that's literally six hours well let's not lie five and a half hours up there to Glasgow and my back wasn't hurting nothing and we got 51 miles to the gallon on a run that was sort of you know doing the speed limit on cruise all the way up there you just can't beat it the fact that i'm now getting more than double again what i was getting out of the tank from the e92 kind of says something to me oh, i hope the petrol station's actually open is it open is it open oh i'm what is wrong with me i can't even i was looking at something in the distance and thinking that there was barriers across my eyes are getting to me geez lads you know i'm on the downhill for 30 wouldn't you? So there you have it, full to the absolute neck for 52 pounds and 81 pence. I've just reset the mile thing and it's given me about 345 miles in the tank. And that was at about 30 miles left in the tank when I actually filled it up. 52 quid to tank the thing. That is nuts. You wouldn't even get past a quarter of a tank in the E92. Let's go take it so you can have a look at the outside because I actually think it's quite a good looking car. It's got quite a lot of the Audi, you know, the new style, angular, super sporty looking kind of styling cues there i mean you have to admit for a small hatchback it is quite a good looking little car i love the grill i like the lights i like the way it's got quite a lot of angular going on here the hexagonal bits in the grill and this is obviously the new sport back version of it as well so sport back basically means that the rear of it is kind of a little bit more squidged a bit more angular i really like the rsq3 sport backs it made just the back of the car look a little bit more streamlined this one has actually been upgraded and it's got the Y spoke 18 inch alloys on it for 750 quid extra. I will say when I had this car first off, I did have it clean before I even made this video, but living in the country now has kind of slightly wrecked that. It's quite interesting having a white car again. I didn't realize how dirty they can get so quickly. Ostensibly looking at it, it's not a bad little car. To me, it kind of looks like a smaller A3, which I guess it probably is, isn't it? But it's about the size of what feels like my old A3. Either cars have just got bigger or I've got smaller. Well, that's definitely not happened, I know that much. One interesting thing to note is this is actually the S-Line version of this. You can get an S-Line Comp, S-Line Contrast, S-Line Style. Now, the thing about S-Line is when I first had an S-Line car, back when I had the A3 years ago, S-Line used to be the top spec that you could get. Now when you come in here it all feels really quite premium like with the Alcantara and the S-Line embossed here into the leather. The steering wheel as well. Like I feel like this is the exact same steering wheel that you would get in an S-Line A3 and above. It's all very premium. Like I love the materials that they've used but there are a few places where it does let it down. There is some slightly cheaper plastics on the dashboard here. When I had my first car we used to have a double din K 
Kenwood head unit here which flipped down and I had a picture of my car on the screen so I feel like although technology's moved on and now you have this really nice interface with all of the gubbins that you need I basically it's got Apple CarPlay that's all you need but I feel like now if only I could just get a picture of my Mark IV with my blue BBS CHs on there and I've completed the complete throwback to having my first car all over again except this one's just you know 10 times the price of it I guess what I'm trying to say guys to be honest I think that the A1 is a cracking little car I really like it is it quite expensive yes it is but is it totally practical and completely fuel efficient absolutely now I know you probably get more fuel efficiency from diesel but diesel is more expensive than petrol at the minute and the way the world's going it's always going to be a small petrol uh, engine before we go to electric isn't it that's going to really really give you those miles per gallon fair play to Audi for lending me this for the month it's really shown me what it's like to actually you know drive a normal car for five minutes and to be honest I'm quite enjoying it I would have done over a thousand miles in the car once I get to the end of the month and I'll do another little roundup then of what my thoughts are before we go into the next car which is coming to the channel which I think is going to shake things up a little bit so other than that guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you check out Gassed Up on BBT3 iPlayer if you want to see me in action on the telly box. And then yeah, stay tuned for the next video. Should be in a couple of days or so. Thanks so much guys. I'll see you super duper soon. Bye.